Hello, welcome to Swiss Watch and welcome to another very special video. I always say this when I have a watchmaker on the show today. I'm with Theo Frey here in Zurich, Switzerland. Thank you so much for coming, Theo. Thank you, Marco. So today it's a real pleasure for me because I've seen your watches only on pictures online. Uh, we did a video before with like five watches you should know where we featured you as well. Uh, aside from Remy Cool, which we had on the channel as well. So it's a real pleasure to finally see this masterpiece in, uh, in the flesh. Tell me, how exciting was the path so far that you took, you know, from building the, the first watch to now this one? And also, how did you start your whole, let's say, watchmaking journey? Well, I am actually based in Paris yeah. and started the watchmaking to discover uh, watchmaking there. I met one day um, an old watchmaker, not that far from my, uh, my own city. And I went to his workshop and I discovered his work and I was like, um, okay, that's that's uh, pretty cool, but you know, all my friends, they are going to go to like uh, engineering school after the baccalaureate and everything. And I was like, okay, what, what should I do? And uh, I finally decided to go to uh, watchmaking school in Morteau. And um, I did it by apprenticeship uh, with a watchmaker uh, named Jean-Baptiste Vio. Yeah. And uh, um, I learned how to make a watch in this place. Nice. So I started like this. Then after I went to work uh, for a year and a half in Switzerland, near to Neuchâtel, and um, I was a prototypist there. And then after I came back to Paris and just started my own business, uh, making the very first uh, turbulent wash that was inspired by the one that I made for uh, the FP June contest. Yeah. And um, this is how it started. Nice, nice. So now uh, we still make the classic version that we sold and uh, we just uh, unveiled this new watch that is sport version, so it's the same caliber actually. Mm -hmm. um, but we decided to make kind of a uh, style exercise, making a totally different case, trying to make a totally different watch with the same mechanism, the same engine inside. So this is um, this is our last baby. Nice, nice. And congrats by the way also on all the success. Eh? And this, this is the piece we present this year to the GPAG. Mm -hmm. And uh, people need to support <laughs> independence. Um, yes, I think so. Especially the young guys like... Uh, like, yeah, the, like you, Remy, Julien, and all the others that exist. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And there is uh, good, good vibes this time with the uh, young independent watchmakers. Yeah. And it's pretty good to see, uh, you know, all these collectors taking some interest into the work of the young guys. Yeah. And um, we do not know how to explain this, but... Um, we saw that there is a new, a new batch of very young collectors mm -hmm. um, from all around the world, Asia, America, everywhere. Yeah. And they have like huge interest into the work of the, the you know, the very, very specific uh, watch brands, some kind of uh, nerd stuff, like geek stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and it's pretty, pretty cool to, to see that we can have uh, sometimes a, a little bit of fight with the big brands. <laughs> like uh, in the GPAG this year, we have uh, like the, the smaller brand that is against us is uh, like Global Forces. So yeah, for yeah. us, it's like, uh, yeah, it's you know, big, yeah. yeah, kind of a um, David against Goliath. So yeah, pretty for pretty sure, cool for sure. For us. So, who, let's say, inspired you to make watches in this design element, let's say? Uh, for the new one, you mean? Yeah, new one and also the, the first caliber that you did. Well, I started to take some interest into the uh, independent watchmaking when I discovered an old photograph in the workshop when I was an apprentice. And uh, I asked to my master, what the hell is this watch? Because it, it's actually a pocket watch, but it does not look like brand new. No. Uh, but not also like very old. No. And he told me this pocket watch was made by a, a French guy whose name is uh, François Paul Journe. Mm. <laughs> and I was like, the hell, uh, there's guys like uh, today making watches and by hand and they're independent. And then I discovered all the, the, the uh, you know, the, um, the world of uh, independent watchmakers. Yeah. So especially with the François Peugeot to start. And after I discovered all, all the work of uh, guys like Kari Wutleinen mm -hmm. and Vianney Alter and all these very famous independent watchmakers that I know for some of them personally now. So we are taking uh, some inspiration into the work of old Breguet watches yeah. in the books and in, in the library. Like we're looking at the library like every day, yeah. but also in some modern modern pieces like um, many watches from the independence watchmakers. Mm -hmm. And um, the new watch, the sport one, is a bit more modern and 
I was um, I was a bit sad because of some uh, journalist uh, <laughs> text I had with the first version uh, telling that the movement was very very cool but the case was simple yeah. and I was like uh, well it's difficult because I wanted to make this case very simple and kind of rules and also the design was made to um, to be easy to make by hand because I made the very very first um, case in uh, silver by myself, yeah, which is very difficult. Huh? Yeah, so the curve and the shape it had mm -hmm. to be quite uh, quite simple. And also I was um, following uh, the book by George Daniels and also some videos made by Roger Smith yeah. himself on the YouTube yeah, channel. Yeah, he's got a good YouTube channel. Yeah, 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 good. He's got some tutorials, yes. tut yeah. tutorials like how to make a. a uh, watch case yeah, by hand, long like, videos as well. Yeah, right? and soldering <laughs> the lugs and everything. So um, I was following this, and um, nice. and after the, the journalists, they were like, "Okay, the case is pretty simple." And I was, "Okay, for the next one, yeah. I'm gonna make something <laughs> very different and a pretty uh, complex shape mm -hmm. case." Oh, sure. So this is it with many curves and also some kind of um, integrated bracelet mm -hmm. and. Uh, this was very difficult to make the, the integrated bracelet because it's something that you see most of the time in the watches from the big companies in the industry. Uh, so for uh, independent watchmakers like us, especially like tiny, tiny brand, yeah. it's very complex to develop. And uh, it took oh, us sure. like two years to develop the strap, uh, the attach, and to have something that is fitting pretty well on the on the wrist. So we have to um, adapt the strap to to the customers because some customers they have big wrists, mm -hmm. as a, some others they have smaller wrists. Mm -hmm. You know, we are making like luxury watches, so yeah. we have to adapt. So it's not that nice when you have a watch with a single bracelet, and you know, if you have a tiny wrist, it, it makes a huge gap between yeah. the wrist. And after we decided to build all the design around the case, mm -hmm. and finally found the idea to take the hours and minutes in the center of the watch, yeah. and um, to make this uh, nice uh, sapphire dial with the titanium markers. Yeah. So it's the same, actually the same movement, but in a total uh, reinterpretation of the of the design, but we, we wanted to keep some tiny details like the the barrel uh, that you can see in front of the watch mm. and uh, the tourbillon. And we also added this uh, little geek uh, complication that is the torque indication when you wind the watch. So it's also uh, two types of uh, customers for mm -hmm. the, the classic version and the sport one. So what is made in house if we go now to the buckle, the case, the dial, the finishing, the components? Everything is made in-house, basically. No, not everything is made in-house. The problem is sometimes uh, about costs. Yeah. Um, most of the people, they think that we want to make everything in-house. Mm -hmm. The problem is that sometimes big brands, they, uh, they want for their uh, communication and everything. They want to say that it's made in-house. Yeah, always. Um, <laughs> the, the problem is that I am coming from the world of uh, artisan. Yeah. Uh, and I don't want to make now everything in house because it's too long it's too difficult and you know it's like uh when you go to buy a ferrari you don't want them to make them their own tires yeah, yeah of course they so. go to pirelli so it's the same for the watches uh, i don't want to make my uh, straps yeah, i don't want to all the cr so, sapphire crystals yeah so. sapphire crystals and we also buy uh, some very uh, general components like the air springs mm -hmm. the mainspring jewels uh, and we make some roof parts uh, by uh, machining, mm -hmm. like CNC machining, outside with uh, some companies uh, working for us. And then also some parts are made by artisans. Mm -hmm. But you know, it was already like this at the time of Breguet. Uh, the master, he was saying, okay, I, I want to make this watch for this customer. And then he goes to the guy who specialized into jewels making and yeah. he has, he's asking him okay i need this this type this type and this type of jewel and then he goes to the guy who specialized into um, gear twin making yeah. and he asks him so this is nowadays what i think is the best for independent watchmakers trying to keep in house the um, the very good components you want to make in-house because you cannot have the best quality mm -hmm. outside then you have to keep it inside but for the rest you have to manage and most of the time when we have something that we cannot do outside it's because 
we cannot have the good quality or we cannot buy it because <laughs> we do not have the money. So yeah. So the case is made in house, correct? Uh, the case, no. We have uh, some Ruth uh, CNC parts coming mm -hmm. to the workshop, but after we do all the decoration, the polishing and everything. Yeah, everything like, um, and it's the same for. Um, That's a complex case, huh? I would say, I would say maybe seventy percent of the watch is made outside, but yeah. just the Ruth component. But you know, the machining is just like parcel of, yeah, of what course, you have uh, to do on the part. Even before to make the finishing on it, you have to adapt it. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we have uh, like machinings to do, to add drillings and everything. And then only after we put the, the part in the watch mm -hmm. and then only after we do the finishing. So it's like a long process and um, quite beautiful. So let's hop on the dial. We've got blued hands, right? Yes. Beautiful 3D dial. So you have the winding barrel 12 o'clock and the turbulent 7, which is uh, something we I don't think I've seen it before. This positioning which is really cool. And at 5 o'clock, you said it's like a torque indication. Yeah. Nice. So this means what? When you wind the watch, you can see. Yes, when you wind the watch, uh, there is a kind of clutch. Mm -hmm. uh, and then after, when you release the crown, yeah. it gives you the torque. Uh, <laughs> you wind the watch. Nice. And um, so it's. Uh, yeah, it's very cool. And after, when you when you want the watch, it's giving you the um, kind of a power reserve, but mm -hmm. it's not giving you the amount of hours mm -hmm. the watch will remain to run. It's just giving you the amount of energy, mm -hmm. the amount of torque the barrel is actually giving now. So it's not going to go down like smoothly, mm -hmm. like a power reserve. It's going to give the curve the mainspring is giving itself. Mm, nice, nice. And all the components are beautifully beveled, huh, I see. Yes, beveled. Uh, we've got actually very simple processes of finishing. Mm -hmm. we, we do like um, straight lines, we do bevelings, we do polishings. Everything about the decoration need to be done in-house. Mm -hmm. And uh, we need to be able to make um, anything again, if like for example, yeah. a, a part is scratched, or for a watch that would come back for a service or a, mm -hmm. something like this. So we need to be able to make everything. This is how we do this uh, very special decoration on the main plate and the bridge is called, uh, in French, it's a um, charbonnage, mm -hmm. but I don't know the exact term in English, but no, it's- French is good. Yeah, <laughs> French is good, it's charbonnage. So we do it with some uh, oil and coal. If you do a scratch on a part, then you just take the coal and do it again. Oh, nice. And uh, this is not possible to make, like, for example, on some Geneva stripes. Yeah. If you uh, do no a scratch on, on a Geneva stripe, it's you need to go like, again. yeah, the, the part is over. So we can do again and again. This is nice. the, the concept. And the sapphire dial is on like uh, these columns, which are on the main plate, correct? Three columns yeah. uh, made out of uh, German silver. And uh, it's kind of, you know, floating in. Yeah, there. with mirror polished screws. Huh? Yeah. Really cool. And on the case, because well, you have a very special type of decoration. Is uh, it the same as on the front? Yeah, the same as on the front. Oh, just it's more visible because it's yes. more empty space. Yes. Yeah? And a big wheel as well. Huh? Yeah, big wheel. And this finishing, this special finishing with the coal, uh, was a finishing that was made in uh, many um, anti-clocks, especially uh, French ones from the end of the 18th to the end of the 19th century. And uh, you can find it on some... Uh, like uh, school clocks, like mm -hmm. exercises from the students. It's very uh, typical from Parisian hmm. watchmaking. Nice. So again, on glass, on all the bridges and everything. Eh? Yeah. Mirror polishing on the gears. Very nice. So if somebody wants to buy a watch like this from you, first of all, I see your website. You can only contact via email. Yeah. So that's the only way, which is good. Because I assume you have a lot of uh, in inquiries about these watches. What's the limitation, price point, delivery times? I assume they're sold out anyway, but okay, this is the, this is the problem. <laughs> uh, Give somebody some hope, you know, <laughs> we, I planned when I started to make uh, 20 turbulence. Yeah. And on this of 20, the first one or this one? Well, total, total. Yeah, yes, it's total. not enough. Yeah. Uh, 20 turbulence. <laughs> then I decided to make this new model and I uh, will make four. Yeah. So 16 classic and yeah. four sport watches. 
Uh, mm -hmm. Just just four pieces. Yeah, it's just four pieces okay. for them. <laughs> and you know the the owner of this yes, one, so he yeah. will be very happy to know that. Nice. <laughs> to see all the details in the video. Okay. Hi. I hope the watch is good, clean. <laughs> I hope too. No, it's very good. And um, so only four uh, watches for the sport. Yeah. But the idea was wow. to develop this new model for the next to come. Mm -hmm. It was funny for me to see that this new model is bringing to us like uh, new collectors mm. with a different vision about uh, you know the very classic way to to make the, yeah. the watches and most of the time uh, when you see the collection of independent watchmakers they're making like very classic watches so it's cool for us to have like uh, two different lines uh, to offer mm -hmm. and um, the, I hope to to be able to offer this in the future for the next model to come. Yeah. And uh, this is why we decided to make this one. So it was four pieces all four sold pieces. out. What's the price point? Is it public? Uh, it classic, is. classic is uh, 108 mm -hmm. uh, thousand before taxes. And this one is uh, 128 yeah. before taxes without the options, uh, with the case in uh, titanium. Yeah. But for the classic, uh, the case was also available in any type of materials, like uh, we're doing some in uh, platinum, uh, rose oh, gold, nice. titanium, tantalum. Mm. So we tantalum can, must be fun. Huh? Yeah, <laughs> not, not that fun to machine. <laughs> <laughs> but um, pretty nice, pretty nice material too. Yeah, um, I mean, I think the price point, considering uh, what comes to mind from the competition, is very good. Yes, this is why we it's, sold it's, out it's everything. Too good, yeah. uh, and then <laughs> after you, you're like, okay, you know, but it's the first one. So and then after yeah. we will uh, probably Jump adapt. Up. Yeah, probably <laughs> adapt the price. And uh, you know, for uh, for some people, they're asking like, uh, why is it? That expensive, but no, no. considering the time, uh, it I took me. It, is, yeah. it actually took me uh, two years to make the the four first watches. Yeah. And uh, now with the guys in the workshop, uh, we uh, just started a new batch of ten. Mm -hmm. uh, we hope to finish it end of 2023, and then after uh, make the last four, that should be the the sport. Nice. And what's next for you? You want to continue building up the Turbion caliber or? You want to go into something more simple, let's say? Or yeah, we will stop turbulence mm -hmm. uh, for the moment. Yeah. And um, we already started, like, uh, we're currently working on the new watch. Mm -hmm. You know, um, in our very tiny companies, we're doing uh, everything like uh, construction, 3D modeling, mm -hmm. uh, prototyping, and uh, even if we're already uh, working on the production of the watches, we have to start the conception of the next one. Of and course, it's yeah. taking a lot of time. We already know that we are going to make a watch that is going to be a bit simple, mm -hmm. but we would like to make uh, maybe more components in house, especially uh, very complex ones like the escapement. Mm, nice. So probably a chronometer, like a three hand chronometer. Yeah. And uh, that should be then available with a classic case, mm -hmm. the sport case, and another, another one that we would like to keep oh, secret. Nice, a bit nice, more. nice. So nice. this is coming, the first pictures or teasers. Maybe, next year? no, maybe uh, 2024, okay. I guess. Nice. So we will take the price 20, point? Uh, range? Probably around the 100. Okay. So. Don't be late again. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't be late. But we have like uh, many collectors that ask us to pre-order. Uh, yes, yeah. pre-orders, but also to to be like uh, listed and you know they want us to keep their email and to uh, yeah. keep them. If you do something new, on the yeah, first we have line. Uh, we have also a newsletter yeah. um, for them, and we try to. The problem is that we are like for the moment able to make five watches a year mm -hmm. and I would like to grow to 10 yeah but it's huge difference it's, like yeah, yeah. yes we double the production and like imagine for a company who's producing like uh, shoes or just <laughs> thinking about the double of the production yeah, is huge of course, yeah. so for us less but um, uh, I hope that we can do it and uh, 10 watches a year would be a, yeah. a good uh, nice. good point. I think you'll get there. Just takes time, you know. Better, yeah, I think, yeah. to to do it slowly and with quality than to rush and make mistakes. Yeah, for sure. This is actually the strategy. Uh, we want to go to the 
highest quality mm -hmm. we can reach. We have our standards in mind. Yeah. And then only after when we can say, okay, we reached the quality, then we will start to, um, to try mm -hmm. uh, to make a bit more watches a year. Yeah. But you know, we try like every day to make a work that is better than the day before. And yeah. It's like, like this, we're working in a workshop. Nice, awesome. Theo, thank you so much for coming and showing this beautiful watch to my audience and myself. And guys, you know what to do. Check out Theo's channels. I'm gonna put all the links in the description below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.